Well, welcome, welcome, welcome to a Waddle at Night video. This is like one of the rare times in which I'm making a video at night just because I didn't really have the time to do so during the day. Now in this video, I will be addressing a lot more sensitive topics. It's not usually the type of videos I make, but because of what happened in my life recently, I feel like this conversation about mental health and dealing with personal losses in your life is very important. So I quickly just want to put my thoughts in on this video and also take a moment to just talk about not just the good in my life, but also the not so great things in my life. And because I know there are people who just randomly stumble upon this video, I'm going to split this video into two parts. The first part of this video is going to be a story that happened in my life just not too long ago. And the second part about this video is that I will be going over more actionable advices and what you can take after experiencing a devastating loss when you're still taking a rigorous course load while still in college. So it's totally understandable if you don't want to listen to my my whole spiel about what loss has occurred throughout my life over the past week. You can just reference yourself to this timestamp right here and that should just take you to the advice part about this video on how to deal with loss while in college. Cool. Let's start with part one about this video which is going to be about a recent loss that has occurred in my life over the past week or so. So as some of you guys may have known through Instagram, I was in Phoenix having a good time shooting some videos with some friends just because the coronavirus pandemic has sent everyone home from college. So during my spring quarter of college, I found it very difficult in being able to keep up with my UCLA friends. And that trip to Phoenix that I did was to be able to catch up on lost time. But the focus of the story is on the day that I returned home, in which two hours before I arrived back home, one of my cats has left our house for the very last time. And since coming back, I wasn't able to meet her ever again. Now my first reaction to all of this was that this is just a normal thing that our cats do. Oftentimes we let our cats out to the front yard just so they can explore, do a lot of things that other house cats normally would never be able to do in their lifetime. And that's also really heartwarming to me because throughout the years, they've caught a ton of different animals and brought them back home. Lizards, mice, birds, and one time even a rabbit. So one of my cats not returning for the night, that's pretty normal stuff. I didn't think about it much because that has happened in the past before, but they always would have returned in the morning. So the Sunday I came back home, I didn't think much about it. I just simply unpacked my suitcase, sorted through everything that I needed to do for the next day, and just went to sleep because I was just so exhausted from driving the return trip from Phoenix back to San Diego. But the sun rises now and it's tomorrow morning. Unfortunately, this time there was no sign of my cat being anywhere. So by then we knew we were dealing with a completely different situation. We simply just posted online that our cat was missing. And we also stuck posters around the neighborhood just to let other people know about the situation as well. I again didn't really play a huge of a role in that just because I had a lot of online class going on during that time. And honestly, by then I was really, really bummed about everything going on. One of the cats I have raised since it was a kitten and I was just a fifth grader, has been missing for two whole days now with no one in sight. So that is when I decided that I cannot keep living thinking about this all of the time other than schoolwork. So I pulled out my laptop and I began to pass a little bit of time by editing some videos that I made on my way to Phoenix. But then I stumbled upon this clip when I was leaving home en route to Phoenix in which I was petting Hua Hua, my missing cat, for the very last time. And it is then where I then stopped editing for the day and just completely broke down into tears crying for the first time in a very long time now. I'm somewhat glad that I kind of unknowingly recorded my very last interaction with my cat, but at the same time it's also a very eerie feeling knowing that you've done something like that. So after all of that has happened, I stopped doing work for the rest of the week relating to my summer courses. But I then spent the next three days not really doing anything relating to YouTube, not doing anything relating to school. Unfortunately, it has come to a point in which I can no longer dwell on this issue and I must continue to do the work that's required of me. But what really bummed me about this whole situation was that I barely missed seeing Huahua for the very last time in that span of an hour or two. I took a quick detour to go visit UCLA because fall quarter was made online for us so I don't think I'll be returning to there anytime soon. And just to reminisce and reflect on the past two quarters I was there and if there weren't enough examples in 2020 to make me realize the fragility of life, I'm pretty sure the loss of Hua Hua has definitely had a huge impact on it. Now that was my story about a loss that I've recently experienced with. Now I'm gonna go into some more detailed actionable advice in which I've took and what you can take so then you too can get through your struggles and be able to continue on with life. But right now it's currently 1am, I still have class at 8.30 so I'm gonna catch up on the sleep. But yeah, 
It's pretty fun to record at night, I would say. So for the sake of this video, we will pick up part 2 tomorrow night. Alright, gonna get some quick rest. I'll see you then. Alright, now let's do part 2 of this video, which is gonna be more life lessons that I've learned throughout this process. And also give you guys some actionable advice on what to do when coping with loss. Because that is something I kinda wanna do on the side for this channel too. Just give you guys quick tips and stuff so you can make your college experience a lot better, especially during this time that we are in right now. So if you find these tips helpful to you at all in any sort of way, definitely make sure to leave a like on this video and subscribe if you're new. Without further ado, let's get into it. First tip I have for you guys when dealing with loss in college is to definitely take time off of academics to focus on your own mental health. It's been around 10 days for me since that story happened, so I've been able to use that time to emotionally recover and as I said before I actually took the rest of the week off just so I can recover from it but I will admit the only thing I did do was to log into zoom to do the bare minimum just so I don't lose valuable attendance and discussion points at the end of those three days that was definitely my least productive week I had in months actually and you know I would say I'm a pretty self-motivated student so Luckily for me, I didn't fall behind as much just because I worked in advance. But if you're not in a position to work in advance, that's totally fine as well. I still highly recommend you to take some time off of school, maybe even ask your teachers and professors to give you extensions on homework assignments and papers. In the process, try to be as elaborate on what exactly happened and what you're currently dealing with right now. And I'm sure a lot of supportive and accepting teachers will be able to grant you that extra few days. And for the few professors that don't give you an extension, I'm so sorry, but you're just gonna have to bring yourself to do those work. Number two, after experiencing loss, make sure to reach out to some of your friends. I couldn't stress how important it is to be able to talk to a friend during these rough times. Even if they don't state it to you explicitly, just know that you matter, they care about you a lot, and they don't want to live in a world without you. For the first few close friends that I talked to during this time, I definitely brought up this conversation about what I'm going through right now. But honestly, that might also get repetitive if you talk about it to the same people. So after a while, you can then shift the conversation to talk about something you enjoy or something you're looking forward to. Which then that leads me to my third tip, which is to try to use the time after you recovered to go out and do some fun social things with some friends. Now it might be a bit difficult right now during this time if you're watching it when this video goes live because a lot of places have a bunch of quarantine rules and stay at home orders. So you're gonna have to get creative with your friends and figure out some fun things to do. One thing that I've done during this time to get my mind off of things is to just play games with friends. I'm usually not a gamer but I found it really helpful just to bond and interact with friends. Some other things you can consider depending on where you live is that you can go out with friends get some food, maybe grab a lunch together, and then use that opportunity to talk about whatever you wish. You can't talk about your recent losses, but some things I would rather prefer you to do is to try your absolute best to talk about something bright, something positive throughout your day, what you saw, or maybe some small thing in life that just makes you appreciate it a lot more. I'm a firm believer in staying positive during this time, and I believe doing fun hobbies and talking about positive conversations can make the whole world better. Tip number four, a pet peeve of mine that I usually do whenever I'm feeling down is to just look back and be grateful for some of my other positive memories that I've had. Luckily for me, I have this YouTube channel with some vlogs on it just so I can look back on it. And honestly, it was pretty heartwarming to see my pet again in some of my vlogs. But also, it was really nice to see some positive things that has happened to me during my senior year of high school. Looking back at it, I can definitely say I had a ton of fun with making those experiences. And number five, when dealing with loss, consider talking to a professional for either mental health or therapy. Now this might seem like a very strong term to use, but I just want all of you guys to know it is completely normal if you ever need help. You shouldn't feel bad about using them either. After all, they are health professionals and they work for either your school or your local area. So since the services are there, why not take advantage of them? Fun little story that I haven't shared to a lot of people actually is that while at UCLA, I actually use their counseling service every now and then. And it's really nice actually because I get to talk to a therapist every few weeks or so just to check in on my mental health and talk about whatever situation that's going on in my mind. After all, college is a very stressful time with so many things going on. There's also so many things in the world that's going on. So I feel like it's very easy to get caught up in things. Take care of your mental health by doing regular checkups with a therapist, similar to how you treat your physical health in which you go to the doctors for a physical. But because of how spontaneous your mental health is, you need to do this pretty frequently and you can't just do it like once a year. One final word of encouragement that I want to leave with you guys is that you are unstoppable Keep pushing at what you're doing. Believe in yourself and your work ethic will bring you there. Oh yeah, and make sure to have a water test today guys, and I will see you in another video. Peace. <sighs> okay, time for me to sleep.